Hello there, music lovers, and welcome back to the woodshed. Hope everyone had a fantastic new year. So if you've been following me on Instagram, or if you are a member over at our Patreon community, you've probably noticed lately I've been listening to a lot of Dixie Dregs. I've been posting some covers of uh, Dixie Dregs tunes, Steve Morse tunes. I've been teaching how to play some of that stuff on Patreon. Uh, one of the interesting points that I've discovered in teaching people and translating this stuff is, you know, obviously Steve Morse is one of the great alternate pickers of all time, and his four-string arpeggiation can be very, very difficult in the right hand. If you're not a strong alternate picker, that can really wreck your day and prevent you from maybe exploring certain ideas that might be in your head, in your ear, or even just covering a Steve Morse tune. So obviously for years I've been playing this kind of stuff and really digging into it, but recently I've stumbled upon a little hack, a little way to help you navigate multiple strings with one note per string arpeggiation, right? So if you've got multiple strings and you just got one note on each one and it's a mid-tempo, you're not trying to economy pick, you're not trying to sweep it, it's not like a bunch of bubbles, like blah, 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 it's not that thing. It's uh, when you're trying to play that medium tempo, but la da la but la da la but la da la but la da I found a technique that's really, really cool, and it's blending hybrid playing with cross picking. And in my opinion, it allows some really cool uh, texture in the tone, and it releases some of that stress in the right hand from carrying all of that alternate picking. So grab your guitar, hang out with me for a little bit, and let's explore this like cheat code, if you will, on some of these Steve Moore style arpeggios by implementing some hybrid picking into your cross picking. Roll it. <laughs> As a quick example, I'm going to drop in just a little clip of me playing Shenandoah at the Surf Factory. While I was out at the Surf Factory, they just had some cameras set up and were like, hey man, play something. So I just came up with kind of an arrangement on the spot uh, based upon heavily, based upon Tony Rice's arrangement of Shenandoah. However, I think it's really pretty on the electric guitar. And there's a moment where I started cross picking and then using the hybrid playing, it's almost like it just snuck into my playing. It wasn't something I crafted and worked out. Uh, but let's take a look at that clip. If you want the full video, it's in my performances section of my YouTube channel. But let's take a look at that clip real quick. Okay, cool. So you can see the thing that I'm talking about. It's in the section that's right. So now I'm going to switch camera angles and kind of give you an idea of what's happening in the right hand. All right, guys, so let's dive right in. Um, when I would cover too many notes with, you know, band that I was in, standing up is one thing. Like playing that song sitting down is one thing, but standing up is another thing. And, you know, you, you wrist kind of wears out after getting through that tune. Um, even now, like, you know, Steve wears the brace and it's like th it's, things like that can be uh, stressful on your arms and, and wrists and things. Over the years, I started uh, playing things like my tune, Truth and Lie, which is four strings. And I realized that I could use that hybrid picking thing mixed with the cross picking. So traditionally, something like too many notes would have these kind of arpeggios alternate picking all of it. It would be that kind of thing, right? So that would be like the alternate picked version. 
Well, it becomes a little more natural these days, and I'm hoping that this can kind of help you guys out, is if you cross-pick the first three. So if you need some familiar uh, reminders on what cross-picking is, go, go back and check my woodshed le lesson on that. Uh, basically, it's taking three notes, or three notes on three independent strings. And it's alternate picking all those. Check that out. And I'm playing out of the key of C for whatever reason. And you can go up and down. So that was adding in that fourth string. So a softness happens when you play that top, that highest note with your middle finger. So you would cross pick through three strings. Let's use, let's use this chord right here. So that's one, three, five, and then another third on top of the open E string, okay? So I'm gonna cross pick the first three. Check out the right hand. Down, up, down. And now I'm going to use that middle finger to play that top note. So now you can have that triple it feel. And it should feel relaxed. Um, you shouldn't feel like this tension thing. of course I'm just playing through the key of C don't focus on too many of the harmonic things that I'm doing I'm just wanting to show you how relaxed this this technique should look and this is just kind of a light job so if we were to put that into the Steve Morse thing um, for example like we'll just use that that right there as an example on the right hand it's just you know C sus4 um, like G over C and then C and then G over C again so you can just play this over and over again to have dare I say an exercise I hate the word exercise but you can have a little something to play that's musical Notice what's going on in that right hand. Look at that angle one more time. So you can actually enjoy um, playing, <laughs> attempting to uh, play a tune like this standing up. And know that that section's not gonna absolutely break your wrist. I always felt like when it came back around to the really, uh, you know, the section is a. Uh, when it came back to that in the song, I was like so happy because it was just a break from the constant uh, picking. The thing that's interesting, and like when I used it in Shenandoah, I was playing through the chords. I was just framing out the chords from Shenandoah, but using that 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 hybrid cross picking thing, and I think it sounds really pretty with open strings because typically when I'm playing picking stuff and I hear that open E with a pick, it's too much. It's way bright and way abrasive. It makes the top end too much. However, that right there is nice and soft.
So it makes playing some of those things kind of fun, right? And maybe you could do that, right? Have a nice little walk up. It's really nice over minor sounds. So here's a little riff that I've been kind of messing with that might end up on my next record. kind of see how nice that sounds it gives it gives arpeggiation uh, a different kind of flavor on guitar like typically guitar players love arpeggios that are very those kind of things where it's just these giant sweeping things or like those kind of things when you slow things down to those medium tempos that's where the triplets can get really interesting Anyways, I hope you dig the technique one more time. If we look at a C chord, or any chord on the guitar, it really doesn't matter. You can use anything you want in the left hand. Uh, we'll take one, three, five, three. Down, up, down, middle. Down, up, down. Down, up, down, middle. Down, up, down. And back and forth. So down, up, down, middle is the pattern. Let's take the C chord. I hope you dig the uh, technique and, it's, and it helps you maybe overcome some hurdles in your playing and uh, open up things in your playing that you didn't know th that were in there, that were living in there, all right? Uh, take it, we'll see you next week. Awesome, thank you guys for hanging out this week. Uh, make sure to jump over to andywoodmusic.com, sign up for my email list. That allows me to get the content directly to you, whether that be videos or lessons or tones or anything like that. Of course, on andywoodmusic.com, I've got a store section that allows you to buy transcriptions and tabs and things like that. Now, if you want to jump over to Patreon, we've got a great expanded woodshed community over there where we do a weekly live Zoom masterclass. If you jump in at my monster tier, that can even garner you a one-on-one -on -one lesson with me at a discounted rate from what my lesson rate normally is, right? So there's some interesting things over there. We have a private Discord server that's just for our Woodshed community members, and it allows guys to you know, swap videos of their gigs, uh, tablatures, transcriptions, things that they've been working on. It's a really cool little section of the internet. Like I said, that's at patreon.com slash andywoodmusic. I hope everyone is off to a great start this year, and be sure to let me know in the comments what kind of content you'd like to see and if this lesson was valuable to you. See you next week.